Hello, welcome to New Planet School. In this video, I'm going to discuss the Dunning-Kruger effect. So just what is the Dunning-Kruger effect? Have you ever asked yourself a question like this? Why do idiots think they are geniuses? Or another way of saying it, do, are stupid people too stupid to realize that they're stupid? Do stupid people walk up to the mirror and look in that mirror and see a genius? You've probably asked questions like this and joked about it before, but one of the questions is, is there, any, is there anything to this? Let's go back in history and see what great thinkers have thought about questions like this or not to see if is this just a joke or is there something real. Let's go back to 400 BC when Confucius pointed out that real knowledge is to know the extent of one's ignorance, pointing out the important fact that to have knowledge is to be able to know what you know and to know what you don't know. Plato, not long after, says, I know nothing except the fact of my ignorance. He's not willing to accept what he knows because he knows too much about what he doesn't know to be able to do that, basically echoing what Confucius said. William Shakespeare, much later, says, The fool doth think he is wise, but the wise man knows himself to be a fool, introducing a new concept that the fools think they're wise, but also the wise men think that they actually might be a fool. It's starting to look like there's something to this idea. Charles Darwin, ignorance more frequently begets confidence than does knowledge. In other words, the competent people might be con confident, but the more incompetent people actually might have more confidence than they do. Mark Twain essentially says the same thing when he says, to succeed in life, you need two things, ignorance and confidence. In other words, if you're not ignorant, you might actually not succeed very well because you might actually realize how hard it is. George Bernard Shaw, beware of false knowledge. It is more dangerous than ignorance. In other words, thinking and being confident that you have knowledge when you actually don't is actually more dangerous. Bertrand Russell, one of the painful things about our time is those who feel certainty are stupid and those with any imagination and understanding are filled with doubt and indecision. Essentially saying that the incompetent people overestimate their abilities and the very competent people underestimate them. It's starting to look like something might be true here. And of course we all know the expression, ignorance is bliss. So, let's imagine actually asking the question, is there anything to these claims? Are ignorant people actually ignorant of their ignorance? Or do poor performers poorly judge their performance? This is, these are things that can actually be measured scientifically. So how would you go about doing that? Imagine you define performance in some way, some exam that you're going to give, and you have your poor performers down here, and you have increasing performance in this direction. And then, after the performance is done, the test is taken, you ask people to judge their own performance, to look back and ask, how well did you do? In other words, you do a test of their cognitive abilities, and then you have them look at their own cognitive abilities. In other words, you test their metacognition, their ability to judge their own thinking by thinking about it. Now, what should this curve actually look like? This is what it should look like. It should be a line that looks like this. People who think that they perform poorly, hopefully, are the people who performed poorly. The people who performed very well, hopefully, are the people that actually performed very well. 
and so forth. This is what the curve should look like. So if this joke and these quotes from all these great people is, are true, what we might imagine this curve would look like if we actually went and tested it scientifically is it might look something like this. The competent people are up here. They are perfectly capable of seeing what they're doing, but the poor performers think they're much smarter than they are, and they judge themselves to be up here where they actually aren't. So, enter Dunning and Kruger. They actually decided to test this scientifically. And the way they did this was with four hypotheses. The first hypothesis is the obvious one. Incompetent people tend to overestimate their skill level. Simple thing to test, that's the hypothesis. Second, these incompetent people also fail to recognize the actual skill in others. So when other people are not competent or more competent, incompetent people can't tell the difference. Three, the incompetent people are also poor at seeing just how extreme their incompetence is. So if you have a really, really bad performer, they don't know they're a really, really bad performer. They actually think maybe they're a good performer. They can't really tell. And four, and this is the important one, if they get additional training, they will actually admit that they were unskilled. Looking back, they will say, yeah, you're right. I was um, not as skilled as I thought I was. That's an important one because it tells you that if you can actually train people to actually improve if you can break them out of this cycle. Okay, so here's the actual paper right here, published in 1999. All the details are there. You can go find it and read it and get all the gory details. Here's a summary. The studies were done with real people, so this is not hypothetical. This is actually science. This isn't just funny monkeys looking at Einstein in the mirror or quotes. This is actually tests that were done. They gave tests to subjects that were students. They gave different types of exams to them. And when they left the exam room, they were asked to assess their own abilities. They'd basically be asked, how well did you, do you think you did on that exam? And sure enough, what the data show quite clearly is that the poor performers overestimated their performance. In other words, this appears to be true. This is the Dunning-Kruger effect that poor performers tend to overestimate their actual performance. And I'll show the data in a minute. Even when they were shown their scores, suppose their scores weren't very good, the more incompetent people judge themselves as having a higher relative rank to others than they actually did. So you have a poor performer, you show them their score is really bad, and you say, where do you think you rank relative to everybody else? They would typically say it was higher. So an example of, this, of these two is here, those in the 12th percentile, a very poor performance, placed themselves in the 60th percentile. They were at the very bottom and they put themselves above average. Um, so it looks like, indeed, this is actually true. And that's why this phenomenon has actually a name, the Dunning-Kruger effect. Interestingly, the studies also showed something at the top, that the most competent people tended to underestimate their relative competence. As we saw in some of those quotes, they, people were observing that people that were quite competent tended to doubt themselves. Um, and one of, the, one of the hypotheses that has been put forward here is that for the most competent, the test appeared to be easy, so they assumed they were easy for everyone, and they basically ranked themselves along with everybody else. So, Dunning and Kruger referred to this phenomenon that they, they found through these um, scientific experiments, a double curse. And here's why. This is what, how the, what the curve should look like. And here is what it actually looks like. It looks like this. And what we see is the top performers slightly underestimate because they think it's easy for everybody. And down here the people overestimate. And it's a double curse because the poor performers that are down here 
have a, uh, a the curse that they happen to be poor performers, but it's a double curse because they can't see it. They actually don't know that they're performing poorly. And they don't know that there are people up here that are performing much better than they are. And it's a dramatic effect. In the experiments, this number tended to be an overestimation of their abilities by 30 to 50 percent. And the curves tended to be flat like I'm showing, he showing here, so that even if you're a poorer performer, it didn't matter. You thought you were about where everybody else is. And this, therefore, confirms several of those hypotheses that they put forward. Here are some of the actual results taken from uh, this paper up here. And here's some of the actual results. This is people that performed in the bottom 25% all the way through the top 25%. And they were asked, what quartile do you think you're in? And sure enough, those in the 12th percentile, in terms of the actual test performance, thought they were in the 60th percentile. And as you can see, the curve in this entire range right here is fairly flat. Whether you were 0th percentile all the way up to almost the 75th percentile, everybody thought they were in this range. It didn't really matter how the, what their performance was. Over here, you can see it goes up. People start to realize that the more competent people were doing more competent work. Um, but there's this slight dip because they think everybody is actually um, more like them. So the curve is quite, quite flat. This is what it looks like in terms of raw scores. This is the score they actually got on the test. This is the score they thought they got on the test. And you can see that the top performers basically could figure out what the, their score on their test was going to be quite accurately. So that's actually the real data. Um, one of the interesting things to think about is that there's, there's the opposite of the Dunning-Kruger effect can actually also occur, and it's referred to as the imposter syndrome. And what that refers to is that sometimes the people that are very competent don't trust that they should actually be as competent as they actually are, and they would actually put themselves much lower because they don't actually feel like they have reason to be as competent as they are. And so that's another interesting um, syndrome that you might have heard of. Okay, so why do you care about this? The Dunning-Kruger effect is extremely important. Let me give you one example of why that is. Um, later, some more experiments were done with men and women, and they were doing given a test on scientific reasoning. The, when they were done, they, they graded it, and there was no gender difference whatsoever in the results. Not too surprising. Men and women performed uh, basically the same. However, the problem was the women reported a much lower self-assessment than the men did. And worse, afterwards, everybody was asked to participate in a very fun science competition and the women declined much more often than the men did. And when a statistical analysis was done of this, it revealed that the self-assessment was correlated with whether or not they declined to um, participate in this science competition. So what does that mean? Is that women performed equally to men, but they felt like they didn't, and that made them enjoy it less, and they didn't want to participate in in, in this science competition, which is really bad considering that every once in a while women actually win Nobel Prizes in physics, it's probably best to um, recognize that this is happening and one can imagine doing something to communicate to these women that they're doing a, a great job and they should continue to participate. Okay, so there's some good news in all of this. Um, the good news is you watch this video, and now that you know that, you'll go out into the world and you will probably see examples of the Dunning-Kruger effect all around you. Uh, more importantly, hopefully you'll see it in yourself. All of us are subject to the Dunning-Kruger effect, and we all, almost always will be making mistakes and judging just how competent or skillful we actually are. And now we might be a little bit more aware of that and be able to judge ourselves better and then be able to pre perform better where we want to and where we need to. Um, the other nice thing about the Dunning-Kruger effect is it's not like IQ 
which is mainly genetic, but it actually addresses a top-down effect that's just how we see ourselves, how we assess ourselves, and how we are able to step back and look at what we're actually doing. In other words, it can be changed. It's not fixed in stone, and that's great, because now that you know this, you can go um, and deal with it in your own life. The other nice thing is that they, the experiments show that to be able to estimate your ranking among your colleagues can actually be improved simply by acquiring more skills. So anything that you enjoy doing or need to do, go become more skilled at it, look back, realize that you weren't as skilled as you thought you were, and you will be a lot better off. So go practice. Later studies that were done to try to confirm the Dunning-Kruger results found similar results, but they also showed that typically poor performers don't understand that they need to improve, even with feedback. And if you think about it, that's, that's slightly obvious. If somebody's in the 12th percentile and they think they're in the 60th percentile and you, and you tell them they need to do better, they might think, hey, I'm doing better than average. Why do I need to improve? Um, so the moral of the story is whatever you're doing, just keep practicing. You might not be as good as you think you are. Um, and certainly by practicing, you will, you will definitely get, get better. Okay, finally, I just wanted to end with this interesting story. The uh, Dunning-Kruger paper won the 2000 Ig Nobel Prize. And if you don't know that prize, it's given out right before the real Nobel Prizes are, are given out, in, at, actually at Harvard. And they honor achievements that first make people laugh. For example, uh, the, the chimpanzee looking at Einstein in the mirror and all those quotes. But in the end, it makes them actually think. And then there might be something scientific to this, as this paper showed. And so for that, they won this Ig Nobel Prize in 2000. And so with that, thank you for being here at New Planet School. I hope to see you here very soon.